<laughs> oh my god, man. This guy's a freak. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Loan University. And this week, I'm taking on another highly requested player and band that is Jared Smith of Arcspire. This is a Canadian death metal band from Vancouver. They've released four albums. I'm going to be covering Drone Corpse Aviator off of their most recent release, Bleed the Future. I know this is a technically crazy band. I'm not too familiar with their music, but I did play a show with them back in Vancouver at the Rickshaw Theater on some festival with Scale of Summit. This was probably 2015, 2016, but Clayton was on bass. Um, I don't think Jared had joined yet. I honestly was not even aware Jared had joined this band. I just knew of him from, I guess, whatever other band he used to play with, but I know he's a freak of a player, so him joining this band is no surprise. Uh, yeah, let's jump in. I know this is going to fly by fast. I'm going to do my best to catch it as it comes. This is Drone Corpse Aviator by Arcspire. Hi, I'm Jared Smith from Archspire, and I'm going to be playing Drone Arch Spire, Corpse I'm sorry. Aviator from our new album, Bleed the Future, on my brand new Dingwall Z3. Dingwalls are sick. God bless. Guys, a freak. Okay. You know, if I look the other way, I miss a thousand notes. Um, yeah, he's insane. This two-handed tapping right off the bat is just right tight on the grid with everything. I mean, it's insane playing. It takes insane precision. Two-hand tapping is really hard to do. Uh, as far as timing, you know, teaching students this technique I used to talk about, it's like playing piano just on the fretboard, but it's kind of different because on piano, you have like a treble, like a melody, and then a bass line. If you were to do that on two-hand tapping on bass, you know, you kind of have your top part, maybe a bass note. But when you do these like fast unison lines that are more linear, it's almost like taking two hands and trying to play a bass line on piano. It's like what finger goes where, and you have to be really intentional about where you put the finger. So something like that kind of stuff, it's like you, your fingers have to wait and be right in on those one and a two and a three and or you know 16th triplets or whatever's happening here. So aside playing that show with them, this is kind of my introduction. So I know everything is just like nitty gritty fast. Let's keep going. some double thumb. There's an entire tonal change there. I didn't expect that. That's really pretty. Trip a lit, trip a lit, boom. It's cool. There's no good place to stop, but he's already done three techniques. I've talked about the two-handed tapping. You'll notice that when he does that, he's kind of laying over. I talked about this in the Dream Theater video on the Metropolis, John Myung. It's an important technique when you're doing two-handed tapping to kind of lay that first finger, the one that's closest to the nut, kind of over the strings you're not using. It almost mimics that hair tie thing, because if you don't, and you tap a note and let go, you're just going to have all this ringing out. So it's important to kind of go... And it's dead. You know, whatever you're playing, I can't think of a pattern like that right now. The double thump is really cool. I love seeing this being used a lot more in the metal bands. It's perfect. It's percussive. It's precise. You know, down here. It's 
It's a great technique. If I were to be in a band like this, I would probably gravitate toward that technique a lot. You can get way faster with lay, way less effort. And I want to go back and check out that you know, complete shift. It, obviously, the tone was like 180 different, something more smooth, uh, softer. Uh, it was a really beautiful passage, kind of classical. There were some diminished chords in there. Let me see if I can go catch that. Double thump, really great. Nice little diminished passage there. That kind of thing, minor with the diminished seven, really pretty. Very common chord progression and chord sequence and tonality used in you know genres like this. Um, I did not expect it to go really, really quiet, but it's cool. And he's got a great technique. Um, one thing I'll point out about Jared is that despite how intense this music is, it's important to be relaxed and have a really light technique. You know, he's not going, he's not going like that. He's got a really controlled, there's not a lot of movement, has to be efficient to line up with everything else, especially at this speed, intensity, and precision. Um, let's keep going. That was a harmonic there. Dun 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 dun. Triplet thing was cool. Right back into it. I can't get over those vocals. I want to go back and catch that floating thumb technique is really important the more strings you have jackson please make me a six string bass i love this five string but i'm a six string player and this is making me really want to play my six string which is hanging on the wall i need to bring it out for video but uh six strings kind of home for me five strings been more home lately because i've just been playing jackson and i love this bass i've taken it on tour but there's so many more options for my style of playing with a six string, and he's really utilizing them all here. But what I was saying is that the more strings you have, you have to be very cognizant of muting. You'll notice that his thumb is kind of going from the pickup, and then when he plucks a little higher, it kind of follows him up. That's called the floating thumb technique. It's the only way to make all of this jumping around string skipping clean um, because we're not palm muting on bass. We don't have that luxury of just setting our palm on the bridge and just kind of, you know, letting it mute everything. You have to kind of follow. <laughs> And it's important to do that. You kind of see it right here. Right there. Yeah. That's neat. Back to a mellow thing. That's a lot of pull-off stuff, you know. Really, the timing it takes to do that technique in general is nuts, and just at that speed, I mean, this is, you could just, I could just hear the hours, you know, Jared has put in. That kind of stuff right there. That's exactly what I was talking about. I was waiting for it to come back. Being kind of, if you watch his index finger, he's kind of placing it prematurely for the next pattern to start those pull off patterns. I mean, he's doing it at such speed that I honestly can't do. But just watch the index finger. He's 
putting it down. Putting it. It's insane. I gotta make that face. Hold on, I don't want that to be over. I'm gonna go back and listen to like the last minute or so. You don't want it to be over either. I know you don't. I just wanna get a little bit more. I didn't realize it was such a short song at three something minutes. Okay. A lot of pulling off going here. And I think the last thing I hadn't really pointed out is the three figure technique. I'm such a proponent for it. Why use two and you can use three? Four is weird because the pinky is so much shorter, but if you can get down the three finger technique, your life will be a lot easier playing at this speed in this genre or you know at this speed in another genre uh, but the side effect of that is is that when you're playing against most fast stuff in groups of 16 so four groupings you're putting three on it so it's one two three one you know one two three four one two three four one it kind of resets one two three four and then one two three four and then one two three four so you gotta kind of have this constant hemiola which is an offset three against four kind of rhythm in your mind <laughs> And that's a tough thing to get down. You got to kind of keep track of it, especially for those long just digga 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 because you'll lose where the one is really quickly. But again, Jared has it mastered. Just makes me want to do this. It's insane. So there you have it. Arch Spire, Drone Corpse Aviator, Monster Player. I mean, if there's a faster, heavier, more like tight band in this genre, I would love to hear them because, I mean, who's, who can sing faster than that? I, don't, I really don't know. It's just an insane demonstration of precision, uh, super tight. When we played the show at them, I think we were loading in or something, and I didn't get to see a lot of it, but it, you know, I remember it sounding like this, this good, live as well. Uh, crazy cool band. Jared is a monster of a player. He's seamlessly switching between tapping, double thump in the beginning a little bit, and then going right into these like really melodic, broken down passages. He has a masterful control over his touch and dynamic. You know, I did mention he's using a lighter touch, but in the heavier parts, you know, he's kind of digging in a little bit, but it's fluid, it's it's efficient. And that's the important thing when playing at this speed, you know, in this kind of technical death metal. And honestly, I think the hardest thing he's doing is some of these tapping passages and then switching back to finger style. You know, you know, making this jump, you know, it's like two feet to jump. You gotta be right on it. You have to be thinking about what note you finished pulling off with your right hand tapping and Use that as a relative to know where you're going to land back here. I mean, it's there's a lot of thinking going on here, despite how easy he makes it looks. But nonetheless, this was really cool to see Jared playing with this band. Um, I'm a huge fan, and uh, I need to go practice, right? Thanks so much for this recommendation. I would love to do more Archspire as well. I appreciate all of the recommendations. I have a list going now. I'm getting to them all. If you've requested a song, it is on my list. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Hit that button, drop me a comment, and lastly, make sure you subscribed. Cheers, and we'll see you next week.